Hi, everyone. It's great to be here. A wonderful introduction from Benito and Omar. And I like being able to see what you've already done through the symposium and what you have planned for the next couple of sessions as well. It's uh, great to be here tonight to talk to you specifically about advocacy. And I, advocacy is my one true passion, so I have no um, issue going on and on about the topic. That being said, if I ever start creating, um, you start falling asleep or you're getting a little bored, feel free to throw in some questions in the chat box. Um, we're going to have time for Q&A at the end, as you saw on the agenda, but I want to make sure you get the most out of this session. So the more questions you're able to introduce throughout, uh, the more I'll be able to address your specific needs as club members. So to get us started, I want to turn to the first slide and ask you all, what does advocacy mean to you? Advocacy is one of those words that gets thrown around a lot. It's not exactly the same thing as educating. It's not the same thing as government or policy. It's definitely not the same thing as lobbying. So what exactly does it mean? Well, at UNICEF USA, we see advocacy in, in two different parts. Um, we see advocacy as supporting a, overall a cause or a policy you believe in. And not only supporting it, but being vocal about it. So you can't just have this belief in your head. You really need to tell other people and speak publicly on the issue that you care about. And by speaking publicly and educating others around you, you're able to amass enough power to influence decision makers. So number one, you have to care about something. <laughs> number two, you have to speak out about it. And number three, you have to target the right people who are going to be in those positions of power to enact change or to be able to take action on your behalf. So we'll go ahead and move to the next slide. Yep, we see advocacy in two parts. Oh, yeah, there we go. Um, the, first, the first part, uh, according to UNICEF USA, we see advocacy with a capital A. And by that, I mean this is specifically working with government officials, so working to influence lawmakers like the U.S. Congress on issues that affect children. And this includes urging the members of Congress or the federal government to make sure they're funding UNICEF on a regular basis. UNICEF needs funding every year in order to continue to operate its programs effectively. The U.S. government is the single largest donor to UNICEF when it comes to regular resources, and that's, those are the types of resources that UNICEF needs in order to be able to respond in the event of an emergency. So um, really, UNICEF would be cash-strapped without the U.S. government, and so that's why at UNICEF USA, if you ever go to our website, our biggest promotion is usually talking about funding or what we call appropriations uh, for UNICEF from the U.S. government. But of course, that's not all that is encompassed within Big A Advocacy, so I'd love to see a couple of responses in the chat box about any experiences you might have had in the past with this Big A type of advocacy. Ah, I love it. Okay, Omar said, calling congressmen on World Children's Day. Yes, exactly. Oh, somebody is in the National Congressional Action Team. Well, that's great, too. Uh, those are both fantastic examples. And it doesn't, you don't need to say anything about UNICEF specifically. There's a lot of ways you can be advocating um, for issues you care about. Even though tonight's call is about UNICEF and we should always be putting children first. Uh, I know in my personal uh, life, I advocate for environmental um, rights and regulations. I, I advocate for equality of all people. So there's just a lot of different issues you can attach yourself with and you can constantly be bugging or, or politely writing and calling your officials and your, your elected leaders to make sure that they're supporting the views that you have. I'm seeing some other responses. Uh, oh, somebody used to work for the U.S. Senate. That's fantastic. That's, that's completely and totally big A advocacy. Um, and I see sending letters to local congressmen. Yes. That is also big A advocacy. Anytime you're having um, a direct interaction with an elected official and you're specifically asking them to do something on your behalf, that would be considered big A advocacy. So you could do that via a letter. Um, I don't know if any of you know what fax machines are, but in the old days, we used to fax people, um, phones. 
There's even some new texting-based services where you can text your member of Congress, uh, and technically that counts as, as big A advocacy. So a lot to be, to be done through this. I'll give you one quick example. Uh, this past year, uh, in, in the fall of 2017, an act called the Reinforcing Education Accountability and Development Act, otherwise known as the READ Act, was passed into law. And the reason this was such a big deal is because a version of this piece of legislation or this bill was first introduced into Congress in 2004. That was way back when Hillary Clinton was a senator in New York. And so what, what would happen is it would get introduced into Congress. Some member of Congress would say, hey, I want us to vote on this or I want to support this. But it just wouldn't be able to, to get enough support or momentum behind it to be able to finally pass into law and be signed by the president. And so finally, this past year, there were enough people, enough global citizens out there who were really clamoring for this specific act, which looked at education in developing countries, how to support education to with vulnerable children, those who have no access to education or to quality learning materials, to teachers in schools. And so this piece of legislation says the U.S. government cares about this issue and we promise to put funding and support behind it so that in future budgets, in future plans, the State Department and the U.S. Uh, USAID will will make it a priority. Uh, so that was great to see. And it was all because of supporters like you all, including students who were very vocal on the issue and, and kept knocking on their members of Congress door, sending letters, making phone calls to, to make it a reality. Uh, so wanted to give you that quick example. Then the second version, uh, the second way that UNICEF USA sees advocacy is with a little a. And by that we mean advocating for UNICEF and the protection and survival of children in the public eye through social media, through in-person events, and through the promotion of UNICEF USA campaigns. So you all probably have some great examples of little a advocacy as well, and I'd love to see some in the, in the chat box coming through. Um, one that first came to my mind is there was recently a hashtag her Too campaign. You probably all saw the Me Too campaign on Facebook and Twitter, a very social media site, Instagram. And UNICEF USA wanted to take this opportunity to, to be a voice for those who, who weren't being represented on through the online conversations. So Her Too is really about looking at um, gender-based violence, sexual assault among uh, girls and women in, in developing countries or in other countries around the world who might not be getting the same amount of visibility as those in the United States or other, um, other higher income countries. Somebody brought up the end trafficking campaign. You read my mind. Uh, uh, yes, the, we're going to flip to that slide momentarily, but the end trafficking campaign, which is a part of UNICEF USA is a perfect example of how um, you all can support little a advocacy. Just by, just by retweeting, reposting, sharing these sorts of infographics with family and friends, you're, you're getting the word out and you're creating this momentum. So like I said in the beginning, advocacy is about either harnessing enough power to enact change or, or targeting a specific person in power to enact change. So in the case of and trafficking, you can do both things. You can continue to, to spread this messaging online and in your school so that enough people know about it that they start demanding change. And that way you're able to drive all that energy towards people in power, elected officials, who can go ahead and create laws that would protect survivors, that would prosecute uh, traffickers, that would keep children safe online. The, there's a bill out there currently called the Stop Enabling Sex Traffickers Act. And it's a really key piece of legislation to make sure that um, those who are on the internet aren't, be, aren't being taken advantage of, um, that there's safeguards for, for children and that nobody is uh, knowingly trafficking individuals. I know we're going a little bit out of order here. I'm making Benito and Omar work a bit. <laughs> uh, if, if you want to flip back just uh, two slides, I think. Or we can keep going, either way. One quick point I wanted to make is that with Obama on the screen and 
this is we're completely nonpartisan, completely neutral. UNICEF USA, when we advocate, we don't bring any personal politics into things. So no matter how you feel on different issues, if you ever have the opportunity to speak directly with a lawmaker, you have to remember that we need to put children first. And so however you might feel about a specific political party or a specific person, you can't let that show because we never want to jeopardize either support or funding for children. And so I put this here specifically because you would not believe the amount of of members of Congress and government officials that really like social media, they're trying really hard on social media. So I, I know that I use Instagram for probably more than others, and some members of Congress actually do have Instagram, so definitely follow them, make them feel good. But a lot of members of Congress look at, at Facebook and Twitter most frequently, and they will directly interact. Their staff members will, will comment on comment on comments, they'll write, you know, create polls, uh, tweet out GIFs or GIFs, whatever you want to call them. And so they're really trying and, and you all can help them by by following them, by interacting with them. And we've read studies recently that show that interacting on social media can actually make a difference in terms of how a member of Congress votes on a particular issue. So of course, face-to-face -face contact or personalization of letters and phone calls um, makes the biggest difference, but interacting on social media, especially multiple times for multiple issues, helps them remember you as a person and, and helps to sway their decision making. So that's, that's pretty cool. Okay, thanks for going back. <laughs> So now that I've gotten kind of how UNICEF USA positions advocacy, uh, and I do want to make sure that if you have any questions, you can feel free to put your questions in the chat box. I want to spend the bulk of this conversation talking about how your clubs can do advocacy. How can you integrate advocacy into what, what you have going on for your respective high school or, or college clubs? So the first is, researching, doing your homework. I don't want to push you towards any activities before you actually know what's going on. The good news is I think students probably have a better understanding of how the lawmaking process works, how government works, uh, compared to a lot of adults out there. There's some scary statistics about people not knowing who, well, I suppose everybody knows who the president is, but not knowing who their representatives are, not knowing who their senators are. So my first piece of advice is to do your homework. Then we want you all as UNICEF clubs to really be brand ambassadors. We want you to be front and center on social media, speaking up for the funding and policies affecting children. Uh, on our website, and we'll look at it shortly, there are a number of different uh, bills out there currently that could use your support. And so every, every time we post something, we need you to amplify that message. We also want you to host letter writing parties at, on UNICEF issues at your club meetings. This is really easy to do. All you need to do is go to our website, copy the letter we currently have online onto a Word doc or something, and get people to, to personalize the message, to sign them, and then send them off. It's something you can do really quickly, 15, 30 minutes, but you're both educating your club members and you're, you're making a difference. You're creating an impact. Somebody wrote World Children's Day for advocacy, past advocacy actions, and that is great because we hope that much like the bonus on on World Children's Day that there'll be other opportunities in the future to participate in bonus on. We, the advocacy team here at UNICEF USA was thrilled by the amount of calls that students made and we know that it came right around Thanksgiving break so we were not helping you in terms of the scheduling yet you all blew us out of the water in terms of the impact that you made and it was wonderful to see those of you who reported back um, and hopefully most of you did because we were able to see the comments that uh, came out of those conversations we were able to to follow up in certain instances and it really helped us build those relationships with all of those offices and then finally uh, as hopefully many of you are already signed up we want you to attend the annual summit, which includes both the Student Summit, March 10th and 11th. It's going to be fantastic. 
And then stick around for uh, March 12th and 13th, because on March 13th, we go to Capitol Hill, and you all have the opportunity to talk directly to your members of Congress. I have done probably 10 different Hill days or advocacy days. They are by far like my second favorite holiday after Halloween or Christmas. They're just the best, uh, and I want everybody to have the opportunity to participate. And finally, report back, aka show your receipts. <laughs> we, if we don't know that you did something, like if a tree falls in the forest, does it make a sound? Essentially what we're saying. We need to know what happened, uh, and that way we can both give you the credit you deserve on, on social media, over email, but also we're able to, uh, to factor that into other interactions or other advocacy actions that are taking place so that we can leverage your, your power as students. We, we want to make sure we're making those connections so that, you know, what you're doing isn't lost on, on the rest of the organization. Your, your voice really does matter. Ah, I see some questions really quickly, so I'm going to pause to answer them. And then these next slides are going to talk about how you specifically can integrate all these various advocacy actions into your club meeting. I see, and apologies if I'm mispronouncing, Musan says, how effective do you think letter writing is considering the fact that congressmen likely receive multiple letters daily? How can we make it more effective? That is a great question. So. Yes, members of Congress do receive a number of letters every day. However, their staff members are required to read every single letter and then categorize them based on the issue that you want supported. So you are guaranteed that someone will read your letter. It's not necessarily the member of Congress, but at the end of the day, all of their staff members, they're their secret here, they're the real issue experts. They really know what's going on, and they have the ear of the member of Congress and are able to, to push her or him in a certain direction. So don't ever think that your letters aren't making a difference. They're absolutely making a difference. To make it more effective, personalize them. Share your own story. So if you're writing about, um, for example, the DREAM Act, which is in support of children who were brought over the U.S. border as children um, and now um, face separation from their families. And we want to make sure that they can remain in the U.S. Um, to be able to, to fully realize their, their childhood. And so if you're writing about this issue, maybe you have a friend or a family member that um, has experienced this. Maybe somebody is, in fact, a dreamer or somebody who has been affected by the Deferred Action Childhood Arrival Program. Um, maybe you experienced something as a child, whether it was an illness or, or maybe you've had a really good life and you know others out there haven't. I think just saying those things can make a big difference in terms of how, how attentive the staff member is when reading your letter. If it's a really touching letter, they will absolutely pass it on to the member of Congress. I've seen tweets from those members of Congress that show the card or the letter directly on social media saying, I read this letter today, you know, it moved me. Thank you so much for speaking out on this issue. So personalization is key. And then I think another thing you can do with your club is rather than send all of your letters in the mail, if your member of Congress has an office that's relatively close to your school and you get permission, of course, you can absolutely hand deliver, hand deliver those letters to the office. Uh, I would always call ahead of time to let the office know you're coming, make sure it's a good time. But that can allow you to both hand them over and have a little bit of direct face-to-face -face contact. Uh, and I think that will help members of Congress and their staff remember you and your, your club. Okay, and I'll take one more question real quick from Cynthia. If a congressman, congresswoman, gets a huge amount of letters on a particular issue, she, he is more likely to address it because it is viewed as important to constituents, so the more the merrier. Thank you, Cynthia. You answered that question. I could have just deferred to your answer. Thank you. And then Neil wrote, can someone explain to me what the little a advocacy and big a advocacy are? I came late to this. Neil, uh, I'm going to ask everybody who's on the call to uh, do a bit of summarization in the chat box for Neil, because you all learned this already, and I would love to see <laughs> you be able to communicate that information back to him. So I'll defer to the group on that one. Let's see. Perfect. Thanks, guys. 
This is a get to know your legislators worksheet. We have this handy and available ready for all clubs. So as a first exercise, say your club has never done anything with advocacy in the past, I would say take 10 to 15 minutes out of your club meeting to do this worksheet. And we'll, we'll get you hooked up with this worksheet after the call. This just helps you go through a bit of background information when it comes to who your member of Congress is. You will be able to find out some biographical details, figure out which political party they're a part of, how long they've been in Congress, because sometimes members of Congress, if they've just recently been elected, they don't know a lot about UNICEF. You could be the first people to teach them about how UNICEF is in 190 countries, how UNICEF is there before, during, and after every emergency. It's, it would be great if you were the first people to enlighten the member of Congress on, on those specific details. So I would say do this worksheet first, and then, dun, dun, dun. This is a screenshot, basically, of what our advocacy work, uh, website looks like. So you'll see a number of different pieces or issue areas on the screen, and these are all letters that you can currently send to your member of Congress. So. Say you're having, uh, you're tabling at your school. Maybe you're tabling in front of a basketball game or you're, you know, you're doing a fundraiser. You've gotten it approved on the website, obviously, because you always get things approved. But if you have the opportunity to do so and you have access to either an iPad or even just a, a handwritten sign-in sheet, you can get signatures for these, these various issues. Um, and the iPad is great because people can just enter their information indirectly and send it off. So you can combine a fundraiser with an advocacy action, an advocacy event, or you, know, you can combine a poster campaign with this. I would say whenever you're creating posters around your school um, to advertise like World Toilet Day or, <laughs> or International Day of the Girl, anything that the UNICEF uh, USA Clubs program promotes, Make sure that you're doing an offline and an online action because you're really able to, again, magnify your impact that way. So I would recommend checking out our website. It's unicefusa.org backslash advocate, and I'll type that in the chat box, uh, to, to read through some of these issue areas and these letters. Figure out which one speaks to you, and then you can go ahead and, and present that to your club and, and see if they're also willing and interested in mobilizing around it. We've done a lot of this writing to Congress already, but I like the images. So this is, again, kind of what our online letters to Congress look like. You do have to enter in a bit of information, but we're, we're always working to improve the system. So hopefully in the future, if you have already filled out a letter and you come back to the page, you won't have to enter in that much information. Um, and all of our letters, too, or the majority of them, you can personalize. And again, that's something I would recommend doing. Um, just adding even one to two sentences about yourself and why you care can make a huge difference. Bonus on. This was just me trying to give credit where credit is due. I do not know the Nequa Valley High School, although I am originally from the Chicago suburbs. So shout out to all the Illinois clubs out there. And then Avon High School, both of them were great participants in the phonathons, also participated in the social media challenge. Uh, we, I think the UNICEF USA Clubs program says, does, says, does such an amazing job combining like tangible actions with also all the social media channels and, and really promoting these various campaigns. So, you know, throw them a bone. <laughs> Whenever they ask you to post things, do post things. It really makes a difference. And we end up using these photos all throughout the office. You guys are literally famous in our eyes because we always need content and we always need photos to, to put on various posters and uh, websites, campaigns, et cetera. So we end up using the same ones unless we, we see new photos pop up. And finally, the, the meat of this, the annual summit, my favorite time of the year. How many of you have been to the annual summit in the past? Can you chat in the chat box if you have? Okay, I'll, I'll look to see. While we're waiting, because I do want to get a sense of what you already know and have done, last, 
Last year, we had about 350 people come to Washington, D.C. for the UNICEF USA Advocacy Day. And we had about 176 meetings about. We had 176 meetings with congressional offices, and that included the members of Congress themselves, Senator Elizabeth Warren, Representative John Lewis, who is a huge civil rights icon, Senator Bob Corker, who currently is the chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, some really important people. And they, uh, they saw UNICEF and they opened us with welcome arms. It's the best way to feel that you're making an impact uh, is, is to be on Capitol Hill, be in those offices. And while it can be a bit nerve wracking if you've never done it before, we provide a really extensive training the, the day beforehand. You have a state leader who leads you along the way. I know, um, for example, Iowa State, where Benito's from, they have, I think, 14 people coming to the summit just from I Iowa State. So their Iowa senators and representatives are going to be blown out of the water. And it's it's something that you, you feel empowered as a group to do. There's training ahead of time. You have a leader on site to make sure you know where you're going that day, that you, you have all your talking points ready. And you can come out of those meetings with members of Congress saying, yes, I will support UNICEF. Uh, in fact, some that maybe haven't in the past, but you're able to persuade them again with your personal story um, to make them realize that UNICEF isn't just an over there. We're, we're an international organization, yes. And UNICEF USA um, does support global causes, of course. But UNICEF USA is also all of you. You're in the United States every day speaking out, taking action. You have a, over 800 clubs, is that right, Jake? You can, you can correct me in the chat box if you'd like, uh, throughout you know, the entire United States. And they, members of Congress don't always realize that. They, again, perceive UNICEF to be something over there in other countries, but they don't realize that UNICEF USA has this amazing presence right here. So 787 clubs, thank you. And, and so we really need you there, because if you're not there, there's no one to speak out for the world's children. There are a lot of issues flying around Congress right now. There's, there's the tax bill. There's, you know, even funding the government, making sure we're not being shut down. And, and you hear a lot of negative stories on the, on the news. The fact of the matter is, is sometimes something as important as children's rights doesn't get elevated to the the position it should be at. People should be putting children first no matter what, but that doesn't always happen. And so by having a youth voice, by having you be present in those congressional offices, you are single-handedly persuading lawmakers that children are important. You know, they can't say no to youth. It would <laughs> it's really hard to say no to you guys. I worked for an organization called Girl Up for four years and it was all about empowering adolescent girls. And I went to advocacy days with Girl Up supporters, and literally every member of Congress said yes to everything because it's it's really hard to say no to all of you. So we have you know board members, donors, we have congressional action team members, we have young professionals, which are next gen members. We have a number of different UNICEF USA types of supporters on Advocacy Day, but I personally think the biggest difference makers are the clubs because it's again youth speaking out for youth is the most powerful message you can have. So this year we want we want 400 people on the Hill and we want more than 200 meetings. So we're getting close, but if you haven't signed up for Advocacy Day yet, if you haven't signed up for the Student Summit yet, please do because Advocacy Day does have a deadline and that's February 20th. So if you don't register before then, unfortunately you can still come to the Student Summit, but you won't be able to come to Advocacy Day. Oh, I love all these people that have come to Advocacy Day before. We have Omar, Gloria, I think it's from Dallas. Uh, let's see. Uh, Giant says he came to 2016 but can't make, couldn't make it last year. That's okay. I'm so excited for these people that are are coming. I'm gonna try to meet every single one of you because I like I like getting to talk to you. Okay, we are needing to wrap up soon, and we are right there. So we'll quickly go through this slide. Let's see. Social media check, online actions check, letters, phone calls, and meetings. That's how you increase your impact over time. So if your club is brand new, start at the, <laughs> the left side of the arrows. If you're, you know, 
pretty experienced, you can start in the middle, and then if you really have your feet under you, we can talk about uh, more of those phone calls and, and meetings. And then please don't forget, anytime you have an event, register it on the website. Anytime UNICEF USA and clubs asks you to fill out a survey, a form, et cetera, do it, please. That's basically all I have to say there. <laughs> and then finally, use your voice. Think globally, act locally. Make that connection, um, not only for members of Congress, but for your, your city lawmakers, for your school principal, superintendent, anybody who is in that position of power, you can make UNICEF stand out in their minds and help to drive home the message. So that's what I'll leave you with, and then I will open it up to all sorts of questions. Thank you, Rachel. Yeah. Hi guys, if you have any questions, go ahead and raise your hand or hit it like send them to the chat like always. So I I feel like I should be making the Jeopardy music. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Looks like there's a question from, and I'm so sorry, Neha, Neha? Uh, apart from the UNICEF National Summit, are there any upcoming opportunities for clubs to participate in advocating for different UNICEF-related issues? That is a good question, and I will admit to the fact that the, the UNICEF USA Annual Summit takes up so much of our brain power that it's oftentimes hard to, to think past it, but we we are interested in doing, having more integration with different moments that the, the club support and how we can bring advocacy into those moments. So for example, um, while you all were getting registered, so it's not great timing for clubs, but during back to school, which is a UNICEF USA key moment, we all were mobilizing around a bill about protecting education for children in emergencies. It turns out that less than 2% of foreign aid goes towards education when it comes to disaster relief. And that's understandable because you need to account for food and shelter and, and basic necessities. But now that the average length of, of a displacement, or there are more displaced people than ever before since World War II, and some children are out of school for 12, 15, 17 years. So if you're not funding education for them, they will have missed out on, on all and every opportunity for that. So that's one thing we mobilized around back to school. And I think as we look at those key moments going forward, we'll figure out what makes sense for clubs to, to rally behind. So that's a good question, Neha. Neha. And this kind of says, my club is planning on organizing a phone-a-thon soon. How can we gather more contacts to call apart from the two senators from our state? That's a good question. We would recommend both calling your two senators as well as your representative, and that representative is in the House of Representatives, so there's two chambers of Congress. It's likely that your club members actually have more than one representative because oftentimes your zip codes, depending on where you live, they straddle different lines. They cut the, the states up into different districts. So it might be the case that you actually have a couple of different representatives and, and you can make sure to call them as well. Uh, other than that, uh, it depends on the issue. If it's something that's more at the state level or if it's something that's specific to your town, you'd need to do a little bit of research as to who the best people are to, to contact about that. Any hands raised? Do you see any hands raised? Uh, 
Thank you so much, Rachel. Beautiful answers. Uh, Melissa is asking, what are some ways to engage members in meetings to advocate? Uh -huh. And I think, are you, you mean club members, I hope. Uh, yeah, you know, advocacy can be a tough sell for people that, there's a lot of people out there that say, I'm just not interested in politics. Uh, cool, I get that. Maybe you're not interested in politics because it feels like a lot of bickering and fighting and, and just a lot of background noise. But real, like, real, real advocacy, not just politics, real advocacy is about going after issues you care about. So for any time you read an article in your club meeting about uh, you know, violence against children or about refugee children that, that don't have, that are separated from their parents, things that speak to you on a personal level, for everything you read, there's something you can do about it. And so the trick is just figuring out what the doing is. And that's where I point to our website as a starting place. And if you don't see any legislation that's posted there, if you're like, well, my issue is actually about, you know, I don't know, <laughs> uh, gender equality. And there's no, there's no online letter currently about gender equality. You can reach out to either Jake or Morgan or even directly to us at advocacy at unicefusa.org. And we can help you to figure out what might be the, the way to channel your club's energy to pursue something like that. One really easy thing to do, and again, you would have to register on the website, is uh, with certain holidays, like International Day of the Girl, like um, World Children's Day, you can actually reach out to your mayor and get a no. proclamation made uh, and declare it an official no. holiday um, yes. in your city and state. And that's a great way of bringing greater attention to the issue and to getting to know your local government. 